Throughout human history, strange sights have been witnessed in the heavens. Depictions on cave walls and written records from our past testify to these mysterious happenings and are found in every geological location and civilization known from ancient times to our present day. In 329 BC, Alexander the Great and his army were molested by a pair of bright objects in the sky. According to the record, these bright objects swooped down on them, causing most of the men to scatter. Still, some of his braver men stood their ground, trying to hit the objects with spears, arrows, and stones from their slings. In the year 1492, Christopher Columbus recorded, seeing a bright, glowing object descend from the sky, enter the waters, and slowly follow the ship he was on for several minutes. This event occurred only four hours before he and his crew discovered land. Minted in the 1860s, we find engraved on a French token a depiction of a saucer-shaped object in the heavens that some experts suggest may have commemorated a daytime UFO sighting. In 1716, the astronomer Edmund Hawley of Britain recorded seeing strange objects in the heavens as well. He noted one of these objects lit up the sky for more than two hours and its light was so brilliant that he claimed that he could actually read the pages of a book by its light. One of the largest crowds ever to witness a UFO occurred in 1970 in Fatima, Portugal. Nearly 50,000 people saw a huge metallic object standing in the sky and then begin to spin like a windmill. Finally, the object plummeted toward the earth, reversing itself at the last minute, shooting straight up into the sky and then vanishing into the sun. Many today believe the answer to this riddle may be found with the UFO experience. If UFOs really do exist, this raises some important questions. Who are the intelligent beings behind these flying machines? Where did they come from? Do they originate on Earth or from a distant planet hidden amongst all the myriad of stars in the blackness of space? Are they friendly, hostile, or merely curious explorers of our Earth? If these beings came from another galaxy, some have estimated they would have come from a world at least two million light years away. That is to say, if they were traveling at light speed 186,000 miles per second, it would take two million years for them to reach our Earth. Even coming from some distant star in our own galaxy, it is estimated by many that it would take up to 70,000 years to reach our Earth from Alpha Centauri the nearest star from us. It has been projected a spaceship traveling only 70% the speed of light for five years to the nearest star system would consume 500,000 times the amount of energy the United States uses in all of its cities in a single year. But there are other problems associated with space travel. Space is full of various gases and dust particles. Professor Edward Purcell, Nobel Prize winner and graduate of Harvard University, pointed out that a spaceship traveling at the speed of light would collide with this space material and that if a space vehicle hit even one particle of dust, it would have the destructive force upon the ship to the blast equivalent of 800 tons of TNT. In addition, for an advanced civilization to travel from even the nearest star to our planet at the speed of light, their ships would generate so much energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation as they hit light speed, we would be able to see these beings coming years in advance of their arrival. And that we have never detected. More than 20 million people have reported seeing UFOs, including commercial and military pilots, astronauts, and many others, of which more than 2,500 were encounters with UFOs and the beings from them. NASA 
has videotaped them in space on numerous occasions. UFOs have been fired upon by missiles and fighter jets, but appear to be impervious to the attacks. They produce powerful electromagnetic pulses, often shutting down electrical machinery and vehicles. They produce bizarre and frightening reactions in animals, and often cause mental breakdown and other severe psychological disturbances in humans. It is noted they are able to materialize as if from nowhere and are seen just as often vanishing as if into thin air in the middle of a sighting. It should be noted they are able to perform unbelievable aerial maneuvers which defy all known laws of physics, including 90 degree uh, turns traveling at several hundred miles per hour, and they have been clocked at speeds in excess of 16,000 miles per hour. Given the vast documentation over the last 45 years or so by the eyewitness accounts, photos, and videos, there really is no room left for doubt. UFOs exist. is back, you might say people either fall into the category of thinking that, uh, you know, creationism, God created the earth and man, or Darwinism, we all sort of evolved from lower life forms, and your research shows... Darwinism, mostly, not so much creationism. If you believe, you believe. It's, uh, you're not subject to argument very much if you're a creationist. So I, I go after what the Darwinists say, and I show how that, in fact, they don't explain either how life came to be. You ask the question, where did we come from? And in part four of the book, I deal with that, and I believe that the Sumerians, the ancient Sumerians and what they had to say about it, and they say that on that planet, the Sumerians do live another culture called the Anunnaki, and that in our past, in the past of Earth, at around 400,000 years ago, they came here to work, to do a job, which I go over in the book, and while here they decided to create a slave, to genetically engineer a slave, using the creature of Earth as a genetic base. That we, the, the modern race of people, were genetically engineered right. by the superhuman race of aliens that came from another planet. And that we look like them. 